Ashley Fogarty um, from the Department of Health Asthma Control Program, and I'm just going to briefly talk about um, like asthma basics and then the services we, that we provide um, with our program. Okay. So, um, um, really quick, the agenda for the meeting today. Um, so, I'm going to start with the overview of asthma and our services, um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Julian to talk about the new asthma data and the maps um, that you can see over there. Um, and the environmental factors, and then Barbara Morgan's going to talk about the I-95 air quality study, and then we thought we could open it up for a discussion if people are interested. Okay, so if this. okay, so if you are not familiar with asthma, sure all of you are. Um, it is a chronic lung disease. Um, when people with asthma are exposed to various triggers, um, their airways become inflamed, um, the muscles tighten, and it makes it difficult for them to breathe. Um, a lot of people who I've actually talked to don't really think that it's a serious condition, um, but it actually is because if you have an asthma attack, you could potentially die. Um, and so that's why we're always promoting asthma action plans and knowing how to manage your asthma. Um, just like the name of our program, uh, that it's the Asthma Control Program. You can't cure asthma, but we try to promote controlling it. Um, and so, so different symptoms of asthma, um, wheezing, coughing, um, chest tightness, and shortness of breath. Um, and then it's just uh, really important if you're having different symptoms to go see a doctor. Um, so the, the, all of this information is in our brochures um, on this table. Um, but this just goes over different asthma triggers um, that could cause an asthma attack for someone. So there's allergens, irritants, and aggravators. Um, most often with the kids that we see um, with their asthma triggers, um, it's like dust mites and pests, um, especially like cockroaches and mice in their apartments. Um, mold is a big one. Um, other things that we see, um, parents are calling about smoking um, in their apartment complexes. Um, air pollution is a big one. And then chemicals and pesticides is also a big one. Um, the um, Home visitors that go into the home for one of our programs, often they promote not using certain cleaners like bleach um, because it, even if you're trying to clean up mold, for instance, it could still exacerbate the child's asthma. So some of the services that we have, um, we first of all we provide our asthma programs um, in the core cities of Providence, Pawtucket, Central Falls, and Woonsocket. Um, those are the areas in the state with the highest burden of asthma. Um, we're trying to expand to different areas, but right now, those are the areas that we're primarily focused on. Um, so, and we have home-based um, and school-based services, and we also focus on the clinical side of things. So for our home-based services, I don't know if anyone is familiar with them, but we have two primary programs, um, the Home Asthma Response Program and Breathe Easy at Home. Uh, the Home Asthma Response Program um, is a home visiting program, um, and children can receive up to three intensive um, asthma home visits with a certified asthma educator, who's often a nurse, and a community health worker. Um, and so when they go into the home, they will not only provide education, but they can also do an environmental walkthrough. Um, and I, I, like often we hear that a lot of families don't want to do that because, you know, they're not really willing to have someone come in their home and they feel judged, but really it's, I mean, you, you find out things about your home that you wouldn't realize could cause an asthma attack. Like, um, if your child is sleeping with like 18 stuffed animals or a bunch of cats and, you know, you have carpeting everywhere or, um, you know, you have water damage and causing mold. Um, it's just, it's a really helpful program. Um, and so that program, we partner with uh, St. Joseph Health Center and Hasbro to provide it. Um, and then we also have a school-based program, which is um, Project CASE, it's Controlling Asthma in Schools Effectively. And with this program, we partner with Hasbro to provide the draw breath workshops. So it's kind of like the home asthma response program where they get the ed education, but it's not in the home. Um, and so parents and children can attend these workshops. Um, and then like I mentioned before, for our clinical services, um, we really encourage the use of asthma action plans. And I have some copies on the table and also handouts explaining what they are, but they're really important um, to teach people how to manage their asthma and 
we really try to promote um, the use of them so that um, if a child has asthma, all of the caregivers involved um, with their care understand when the child is having an asthma attack um, and different doses for medications and when they need to seek help. So those are really important. Um, and we also try to share them with schools as well. Um, this is just some uh, from the uh, Breathe Easy at Home program. So it's our other home-based program. So this is kind of our last resort home-based program. Um, it's for same uh, the province of Target, Central Falls and Woonsocket population. Um, however, we are just focused on people in rental properties. Um, and so we kind of view it as a last resort because um, families are referred to this um, if their landlord is refusing to make changes in the home to fix things, um, like if there's a pest problem or there's um, water issues causing mold, um, ventilation, and it's affecting the child's asthma. So that's when Breathe Easy at Home comes in and we basically refer um, the family to get a code enforcement inspection of the property and then it would go, the results of it would go to the landlord to either, if there are any code violations found, then the landlord would need to remediate the um, environmental triggers.